continue our study. We started last week teaching on revival. And we looked at it, and we had studied the couple of weeks before that one. We studied, is there not a cause? When is enough enough? And we're going to stand for what's ours. And we're going to stand and fight. Jesus gave his life to have a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And revival will bring the church that Jesus died for into manifestation. The church started in the glory and will finish in glory. But we must remove what is stopping it. And that's what we've been praying about and praying for. And the reason we're studying this, um, I felt impressed, because faith comes by hearing. And we're going to look at a lot of scriptures tonight. But we might know in our head that revival's for us. And we look at revivals of time past, and sometimes we think, well, maybe it was for them, or, or else we know, hey, it is for us. But we want it to get from our head into our heart so that when we're praying for it, we're releasing faith, and faith is of the heart. So we're going to be looking at that. I will read again. This is um, something that was written by James A. Stewart. Revival is a spiritual quickening of the life of the redeemed. The aim of revival is to bring new life and vitality to the saints of God through a renewal of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Revival means a fresh incoming of the divine life into a body threatening to become a corpse. With revival in view, the church plans and prepares for the Holy Spirit in her midst, where the living Lord Jesus is the center of attraction. As it was stated in Mark chapter 2, verse 1, it was rumored that Jesus was in the house. With revival in view, the church plans and prepares for the Holy Spirit in her midst where the living Lord Jesus is the center of attraction. The acid test of all revivals is the powerful presence of the majestic Christ, known and felt in all his beauty and glory. Thus thousands of saints are drawn together for no other reason than he is in the midst. The Holy Spirit is the instigator of the movement and the Son of God is the center of attraction. If we have any type of services, any type of happenings that's not started by the Holy Spirit where Jesus is the center, it's not God. It's just not God. Where there's services, if we have a service where Jesus is not lifted up, where he's not the center, where it's not something teaching on the word where it will make the captives free. Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free if it's not based on the word. It's not God. It, it, not that it might be, be teaching that's going to, to um, you know, it would probably be religion, our ideas, a nice little sermonette. And, but we want it where Jesus is lifted up. So he'll draw all men. And that's partially of what revival is. So what are the signs of revival? We're going to look at that. In Acts, when, when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, they thought they were drunk. And Peter said, this is that which Joel prophesied. This is that. Well, what is this is that? Because what the church started out as is what the church is going to end at. In Ephesians, we'll look at Joel in a minute, but let's go, we've taught on this, but let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We have to know what the glorious church is. Each Ephesians chapter 5. How important is it? And as I said last week, sometimes we've gotten the idea that the church is going to go along and it started off in glory and then it's going to go along and have the odd spike here and there and then we'll just coast and then all of a sudden the end of age will come and boom, we're going to have a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Well, Jesus never intended for the book of Acts church to stop. That's the outline of the way the church should have been all the time. It should have never stopped. That's what the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should be like all the time. 
Ephesians 5, 26. Well, let's, pardon me, let's look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ, now this is what we want, as Christ, the anointed one, also loved the church and gave himself for it. He gave himself for the church. The church is his body. That he might what? Why did he give himself for the church? That he might sanctify, set apart, and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The only way the church is going to get cleansed is by the word. If we don't have the word, we won't know what we should be doing. But then the word without the spirit's not going to help us because the Holy Spirit gives us a revelation of the word. If we don't have the Holy Spirit giving us the revelation, it's, it's just in our head and head knowledge is not going to be enough. It's not going to do it because head knowledge has said, well, we haven't seen the works in the church, so it's all passed away. We have to be careful when we say something's passed away. Has holiness passed away? Has, has, has um, the gifts of the Spirit passed away? Well, some people say they have. Well, the people that say that the baptism in the Holy Spirit's passed away, speaking in tongues has passed away, healing's passed away, well, has the new birth passed away? You know, once you start saying things in the word have passed away, we're on very dangerous ground.